What's going on everybody? It's your boy Chuggy from Chug Earth Media and today we are back with The Walking Dead Dead City Episode 2. I'm really excited to be breaking down today's episode. It was a pretty fun episode. It was a bit of a middle of the road episode, like a setup episode. We get introduced to some new survivors, but the thrust of the episode, what made it so exciting to me is that this is a phenomenal Negan episode. He has some moments in this episode that got me really excited. And if you're a fan of Negan, I think you're going to love it. It's brutal and it's everything I was hoping in this show to get to is Negan in his true form <laughs> doing the Negan things. So some of the B plots aren't the strongest, but they might set up something interesting later on. But the stuff between Maggie and Negan, I think is really well done. I'm still intrigued by the show and I'm enjoying it so far and the visuals are still stunning. So with that, we're just going to get into the breakdown. Be sure to subscribe if you're liking these reviews and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. So with that, breaking into the episode. So we kind of pick up where we left off last episode. They have a cool opening shot that kind of yearns back to the first pilot episode of the original series, of course, with the famous don't open dead inside door with uh, the zombies fingers coming through the door. It's a cool visual. I like the camera move that we do and everything. Uh, I gotta say, just it, it, logically speaking, there's some things that I uh, gotta nitpick about it, okay? So we're in, see, it seems like it picks up right where it leaves off, but as soon as they exit this area and they're uh, chasing after the lady with the crazy hair, uh, as soon as that happens, you see it's daytime, okay? And it was nighttime before. So time has passed. They do this thing in The Walking Dead a lot in the whole franchise, the original series, the spinoffs, everything where they, they just kind of make arbitrary time jumps for no reason. So a bunch of hours have passed, okay? But the reason I'm bringing that up is they're trapped in this room. Zombies are trying to get in. They didn't think to barricade the door, you know? It just, it doesn't even look locked, you know? It just kind of looks partially open. I don't know what's preventing it from opening. Maybe there's a deadbolt in there. Maybe I take that back, but you know, it, it's just that that's just what I'm thinking right now. So the thrust of the plot at the beginning of this episode is the crazy lady with the hair has Maggie's bag. I'm not entirely sure how she got the bag. I'd have to go back and watch the first episode again. Did Maggie like throw her bag down and then this lady grabbed it? I, I don't really think we saw that. So I don't know how the lady, how Maggie let the lady take her bag. So that's one thing that's a little, uh, just takes me out of it just a little bit, but it's just a nitpick at the end of the day. The lady has taken the bag. She wants uh, Maggie and Negan to follow her. So uh, that's basically how we start this episode, how we explore this area. Again, like I said, the visuals are still stunning. Uh, we're climbing an elevator shaft, and uh, at the bottom of the elevator shaft, there's just a bunch of zombies. A zombie falls in. And I, you look down at that, it's disgusting, the look of it. <laughs> Just seeing all those dead bodies piled up, I'm picturing the smell of it. That's what I thought of when I watched this scene. And then later in the episode, I'm thinking about smells and it becomes a plot hole. <laughs> but uh, I would just think this elevator shaft reeks, man. But that's the cool thing with the production design is it really takes you there. So we're in a new location and also there's really a high production value comparatively for the rest of The Walking Dead. So it's really, really uh, taking me to this New York landscape and I'm loving that. So um, we got uh, Negan also, he has a line here where he says, don't look down, you'll toss your cookies. And I, I had to look that up. I didn't know what that meant. Apparently it means throwing up. <laughs> I had no idea. That's a new one for me. Is that a Southern thing? Please let me know. I, I've never heard that before. <laughs> but yeah, I learned something new today. So yeah, you see, you guys see it's daytime now. And there's zip lines all across the city. And the crazy lady with the hair uh, went across the zip line. And now we got to go across the zip line. It's a cool visual. We saw a, the zip line at the end of the previous episode. And of course, there are a lot of narrative questions they set up in the first episode that we're hinting at in this one or directly answering. So there's there's a lot of mysteries that they did a good job setting up in the first episode. I didn't mention them before. We'll br get into them in a, in a little bit. Um, but basically, there's a, a building in the distance that's on fire. And they are kind of, Maggie and Negan kind of assume that's where the Croat is for whatever reason. I'm not sure exactly, but if, you know, it kind of makes sense that if there's a guy in charge in this area and there's a, a, a fire that is set periodically during the day, 
that the, the, uh, the person leading the area might be there. It, it at least makes sense that there might be a connection. So uh, that's kind of where they're headed. And it's kind of reminds me of like video games like The Last of Us, Naughty Dog type of design where there's something in the distance, that's where the main plot line is, and that's where we gotta go. But it's nice to have a visual marker and uh, something that is kind of a symbol for uh, where we're headed. So I like that aspect. But I, I really like this uh, scene, just the visuals. You know, you look down and you see the zombies down below. Uh, Maggie gets uh, distracted as she's kicking off where there, there's the truck with the music playing and we see that again or we hear it rather and that distracts Maggie enough that she kind of loses momentum mid slide and now the only thing with this is like we know just based on the fact that it, it, we're in the middle of a spinoff with Maggie and Negan that she's not going to die here so there's like no you know no actual drama but it's, it's fun visually, so I'll give it that. We know Maggie's not going to die here. I, I wouldn't put it past them to maybe kill somebody off in the final episode, but we know it's not happening yet, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's kind of a false drama. That's the only real nitpick I have there. But now we're here with one of the B plots that I think is a little bit weaker. It's this character, Ginny, that we were introduced to last week who can't talk. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this character is, but here we get to see some uh, new locations. Uh, we get to see the hilltop, and, and now they're in Jersey. This is their new setup. But we got a teacher here, and they're teaching about edible plants. I like the, the world building. I would actually like to go deeper into a lot of the world building stuff and learning about uh, what people are doing. But I like seeing like a survival class that kids have to go to. It's, it feels realistic. I like that. Uh, Ginny's character doesn't really do a whole lot this episode though. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get back to that later when we get back to that storyline. Um, so the crazy hair lady, she has a uh, food and it's a dead pigeon and she wants to trade for some of their stuff. And, uh, this pr scene pretty much s sets up something that happens later. We'll get back to, but the lady with the crazy hair, she's nice to them and she they're asking her for advice on how to get to the burning building she tells them not to go to the burning building and then uh b basically leads them to the rest of the survivors here one thing i like about these early scenes is that maggie continually is trying to stay in charge she's like negan we gotta go negan you should go first all these things happen uh, when she's trying to take control, Negan takes it back from her. So, like, she tells Negan to go first across the zip line. And then we got zombies coming in, and, the, and then she has trouble actually getting across. So, it's like she's trying to take control by telling Negan what to do, and then she's instantly uh, not, she's not given that control. And here's another part of that, another example of that is when she's like, we need to go, Negan. And then Negan kind of takes control and says, no, we should follow this lady instead. <laughs> so I think that that's really important. So Ma Maggie almost takes a back seat in this episode. And I think that it's, it, it's a really good dynamic. And I think uh, letting Negan take charge here is just, it's just great writing. And I'm really uh, curious to explore that a bit more. So uh, here we're back with our uh, bounty hunter guy. His name is Pearly. I forgot his name, but I had to look it up. So his name's Pearly. He's the bounty hunter guy. At the end of the last episode, I kind of criticized how uh, Maggie was like, I'm not going to kill you because I want to feel like I'm better than Negan, uh, which was a great beat. But then she leaves him in the same room as a horde of zombies just came in, basically condemning him to die. And this episode does nothing to really explain that. It's still the time jump. Like I said, it's now daytime. And yet the zombies are in this area and they haven't found him yet, which kind of seems against how we know this, how the zombies act. You know, uh, it's not like they're bloodhounds, but they they can tell the difference between an unconscious person and a zombie. Now, of course, they don't go after zombies to eat them. That's established in the lore. But they do know we've seen them eat sleeping, sleeping people before. So it's not like they see somebody unconscious or in an unconscious state and they don't uh, start going after them, you know? So it, it, to me, kind of takes me out of it that he's able to, there's no explanation for how he's able to survive the night, you know? Some time has passed, hours, I don't know. It's definitely, we didn't see the sun start to rise up in the last episode, and then now it's, it's full on daytime. So 
definitely hours have passed. I don't know how he survived. That's one thing I would have liked to see. Um, so yeah, that that's a nitpick worth pointing out. And uh, I will say, so his subplot this episode is uh, we saw last week he had this slip of paper with an address on it. And uh, it's some family member. It has the same last name as him, Armstrong. So uh, that was a mystery that was set up, set up last week. Something I didn't even mention in the review, but uh, it's something I picked up on. And this episode resolves that in a way that's not satisfying at all. So I don't know what the purpose of this plot line is. At this point, it feels pointless. We'll get back to that later. I like the scene, but it doesn't, in the full context of the show, really add much to the overall plot line, in my opinion. So now we're following the crazy hair lady and she brings them to her uh, hideout with all the people she's surviving with and it's like one big family and they have these makeshift guns which they do kind of look goofy but I like the idea of um, having guns that are cobbled together from things that they found. You know, it looks like, like a nail gun plus like this, I, I don't know what it is but it, it looks cool it is a little goofy, but, you know, I, I kind of dig it. <laughs> I, I like having makeshift weaponry and clothing and stuff like that in an apocalyptic show. That's something I feel like The Walking Dead could have always done a little bit more of. So I'm happy to see that. And I like this new location. We got plants. They're growing food. You know, where there's some clearly some thought put into these people have been here for a while. They're surviving here. How are they doing that and adding a little bit of extra lore in just just the atmosphere it isn't even any lines of dialogue that need to be said um you know i pointed out before in the spinoffs where i felt like that stuff was lacking and i have a lot of people say you're supposed to use your imagination it's like yeah but also the writers are supposed to do that and and, and they don't even need to explain every little thing they just need to put enough there that i know they're thinking about it <laughs> that's that's what i need i need verisimilitude to use a five dollar word so that's what i want to see uh, in this show and, and, I, and I like that so basically um, th there's a standoff and Maggie kind of lies this is another situation where she's trying to take control that's one of the main themes of this episode she's trying to take control of the situation she comes up with a, a lie that she feels is plausible about uh, they're on a way on their way to Canada and a boat crash they happen to be here and I think she's doing that just in case these guys are working for the Croat which uh, kind of makes sense. Negan's against it, and uh, she's trying to con take control, and it fails because they know she's lying. They have that vibe, and uh, I, I think that's a good, uh, good little dynamic there. And then they get locked in a bathroom together. <laughs> so awkward. Uh, here we're back with Ginny, and of course she's not really adjusting well. She doesn't t like being around people. She doesn't talk. And that's I I'm assuming you know when she left with Negan, we got the story told to us. Uh, last week that uh, she basically did that to get away from people because she was surviving just fine with this other group and then she leaves with Negan uh, I, I don't know what why if we're going to delve into some of the the past there why exactly she latched onto him but my assumption just based on this is that she just wants to get away she she wants to be with one person who will protect her but she doesn't want to actually interact with anybody else so that to me is what it feels like. If it's any deeper than that, I suppose we'll find out next week. But I was thinking about like, why do we need this character? Maybe there's going to be some payoff later on. But it really feels like right now that the reason they added this character in is because if they had the same concept where Negan's going to New York to basically protect her, have her in the hilltop nice and safe, that, that's basically the deal that he made with Maggie. I'll go to New York if you help Ginny. He wouldn't have made that deal if, when it comes to his wife and uh, child. Basically, when it comes to Anne, he wouldn't have been okay with, okay, you can keep her safe and then I'll go with you. He wouldn't have left. So the, to me, it feels like we had to make the wife and child go missing and then we made this other character so that he has some reason. I don't know. That's just what it feels like. I want it to be deeper than that, though. And uh, she kind of escapes in this episode, so I'm guessing she's going to play into the rest of the season. But at this point, I'm like, why are we here? I, I like being here. I like seeing the, the new hilltop, but what is the point? Um, but I, I really like this transition. So we go from that shot of uh, Ginny on the bed. We pull into this door frame, 
And then there's a lighting change, and we're in a flashback now with Maggie and her son Herschel. And I really love that transition. It's like a, a nice subtle push in, and it really does feel like one continuous shot. I don't know exactly how they did it. Sometimes when you do a shot like this, you would do a match shot, cut, but the fact that the camera is moving makes me think that they're on a sound stage and they actually have the lights queued up to uh, make that transition. So um, basically it is actually happening all at once. You know, Ginny and um, of course Lauren Cohan are in fact on the set together. That's what I'm speculating. Who knows, I, honestly, but uh, maybe we'll find out. That'd be cool. But just as a, somebody interested in filmmaking, that's something I, I am curious about. So, and then we, we see Herschel on the bed. And I didn't talk about it in my review last week, but the actor for Herschel is, is a talented actor. And I'm liking the way they're writing him. Uh, we're, get, we're just getting a little hint at what their relationship was like. He seems to be having trouble adjusting. I don't know if maybe Ginny is like a, a, kind of in a similar state as Herschel, and that's one of the other reasons why Ginny's here. Uh, he, he's skipping class, and he's doodling. So he's, he doesn't seem to care about anything. Uh, he's, he's kind of not adjusting. Maybe it's not having a father. Maybe it's just not getting along with his classmates. Whatever it is, it's, it, it, with this scene, it's a small scene, but it tells you a lot. And I, I think it's well done. Uh, I, I'm appreciative of this flashback. It doesn't feel necessary, but it, it does give us more insight into the character here. And I want Herschel to have a bigger role on this story because uh, they, they got the actor for it, and I, I hope they do a little bit more with it. Basically, he's drawing, and then she's like, it looks really good, and then he crumples it up. He's not proud of it. Uh, I think uh, all of us artists <laughs> understand how he feels. So um, then we cut to Maggie and Negan in the bathroom. And this is a, it, it's a, just a scene of two people talking, but it's a great scene. It's really interesting to watch. Um, I, I, it's telling the backstory of the Croat and how uh, basically Negan had him around to kind of uh, threaten people. Maggie calls him a torturer. Uh, basically, Negan always knew that he was off the handle but it wasn't until something happened where there was a, a young girl in a car that apparently was a scout from some other group. And he, Negan mentions the kingdom, but didn't say exactly if that girl was from the kingdom or not. But either way, uh, Negan wanted to let her go. The Croat didn't, and he, apparently he took it too far. Uh, it sounds like it was really brutal what he did to her. So the young girl got killed. And that's when Negan knew he had to get the Croat away from the sanctuary. And he shoots him. And that's how the Croat lost, lost his ear. Is because Negan made a shot at him and he missed. Now we know Negan is not going to be able to get through to him in any way. They are enemies from the outset. And Maggie's surprised by this. So one of the theories I had in the last episode, I didn't mention in the last review... But I was like, it would be kind of cool if this whole thing was a setup for Maggie. She's going to turn over Negan and then the Croat, you know, the, the Croat made a deal. Like, I'll give you your son back if you bring me Negan. And that, that's kind of just what I assumed was going to happen, to be honest with you. Uh, Maggie's acting surprised hearing about this, that uh, Negan and the Croat are not friends, that they're enemies. But it could be an act, you know, maybe she actually does know. Uh, and it's just like a double twist type of thing. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think that Maggie is going to betray Negan after all of this? But I really like this scene. And one part that I really like is uh, Negan says, I was only a monster when I had to put on a show for my people to make them feel protected. And that's exactly what he does in just a couple scenes here. And it's very exciting. So I really enjoyed this scene. And, you know, it's 20 minutes into the episode, not a lot has happened, but I'm really intrigued by all, all these simple scenes with, with Maggie and Negan. Not so much the subplots, but I, I rewound this shot a couple times. I just wanted to keep watching it. I, I, I love the atmosphere. <laughs> the only thing with this wide shot is I'm like, where are the zombies? And I guess, you know, we have that, uh, that truck with the music playing kind of as an excuse not to have zombies everywhere because they're kind of hoarding them in circles. So it's like a horde being chased around constantly. So I'm guessing that's what the explanation is, but I feel like there should be some zombies on the road, on the highway, somewhere. 
there seem to be enough scattered about that we can get them in various scenes, but I'm just like, where are they? <laughs> so that's one thing. And, and I know we got like millions of zombies here or a, just a ton of zombies. And that's why the government had to blow it up. So it just feels like, where, where are they? <laughs> you know? So we got our man here, the bounty hunter. He found his uh, family's apartment. And I love the atmosphere of the scene. I mean, everything down to the sound design you know, the creakiness of the floors and how everything feels dilapidated. He has to burst his way in. You know, you hear like flies buzzing around. I like the atmosphere of the scene. And there's a reveal where he opens a, a cupboard. You know, he finds this family picture. And, you know, I'm guessing that's him right there. I don't know who this is, if it's his dad or, uh, I don't know, an uncle or something. It looks like, uh, looks like probably his dad. But he opens this other cupboard thing and it has a, a gun case in it and the gun's missing. And then the the cupboard has a mirror on it. And then he sees uh, the, the, the corpse of his family member. And, you know, it, it's a sad scene. You feel the uh, sadness of it. But uh, I mentioned smells earlier and this is a part where I was like, he should have smelled that there's a dead body as soon as he got in this room. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I, sorry to laugh, but it's just like, he, he shouldn't even be able to stand here. <laughs> like, you should be like, oh, or at least react in some way. You know, we saw that scene in the pilot episode of the original series where there's a similar situation to this. You know, somebody shot themselves and there's flies everywhere. Rick comes in and, you know, he, it, it's a horrible stench, you know. And here we have a similar scene, and it, it's presumably been even longer. You know, who knows how long it's been. And he, still, you know, no scent, I guess. I don't know. That's something that it, it bothers me. Nobody else probably cares, but it does bother me. But the main thing is, you know, that's it, it was a great scene in isolation. I just don't know what it does for us because we already know he's a family man. We already know, you know, he's not completely evil, right? He's got a code even though he did, he shot his own guy last week, which was just dumb, but he's not evil just for the sake of being evil. He's just taking his law too far, you know, and he has no checks and balances and all that. So, um, you know, I, I like the character. I, I think this whole scene is just here to make us feel bad for him, but I don't know that that was necessary. Like, what does this do for the story? There was a th plot thread about somebody he knows being here and the person's dead already, that doesn't do a lot for me. Then he gets caught in a trap. You know, we set up the mystery last week. Again, another mystery. Whose traps are these? It turns out it's the Croats. At the end of the episode, we get to see that. So he gets kidnapped. And now my thing is like, you know, you could say, oh, that scene was there so he would get trapped. And my thing with that is he could have just gotten trapped walking down the street. You know, we didn't need that scene there. Um, but the other thing is it's the Croats trap. And we got, it, it, I do like having traps throughout the city. That's cool. But um, at one point, I'm just like, wouldn't it be like 99 times out of 100 just be a zombie caught in there? There should be like zombies wandering around everywhere. You would think that if they want to trap people, that they would put it in a place where zombies couldn't get to, at least not easily. And uh, at the end of the episode, we have, you know, zombies trying to reach up to grab them. And it just feels like there would be like every day a zombie walking over. It just feels like a pointless trap, you know, unless you're trying to catch zombies, which you'd think there'd be so many that there, it wouldn't be worth the effort to put <laughs> traps to try to catch zombies. Okay, so here we got uh, the, the best scene in the episode coming up. And uh, Negan and Maggie are basically getting evacuated because uh, the, their enemies are here. And it's the Croats people. They called them. Uh, I looked it up. Uh, Barazi. I don't know what that word means, and Google's not really helping me, so I don't know what Barazi means. So, uh, I guess we'll find out. Maybe it's the family name of the people. They are taken out of the bathroom with our held prisoner, and then Negan still has the bone from the pigeon he was eating earlier, and he puts it at the throat of the guy, and I kind of like how it's flipped around. You know, it's Negan threatening them, but he, he threatens the guy and then lets him go, so that's almost the best way to make them trust him. <laughs> and you can see within this scene why Negan is like such an effective leader because he understands like, it's almost like reverse psychology. I don't know what you would call it exactly, but he knows like, if I threaten you, show you that I could kill you and then let you go, 
it'll show that my goal is not to hurt you. <laughs> it's almost like, the, it, it is like reverse psychology. I don't know, but it makes sense. Like, I, I love that part. And then we have the Barazi enter the area and they got these um, motorcycle helmets on. I guess that's the Croats thing is this weird looking helmet thing and they stitch on a bunch of like spiky stuff. I don't know. It doesn't feel like there's a good rhyme or reason behind wearing the helmets. Um, I don't know if it would really prevent that much of, of the zombies getting you, but it's, it's a cool look. It's a cool look, I guess. So I guess we'll go with it. And then we get a pretty brutal scene here where we get to see the nail gun thing used and it like shoots out and then she has to snag it back. Again, it just feels a little goofy, but uh, I don't know a practical of a weapon that really is, but it's a nice look and it's a little bit brutal. So I, I, I like it ultimately. So these people manage to fight off the Barazi. It kind of feels, you know, again, like... Maybe we should have seen one of their other people get killed so we can feel like the Barazi are enemies that are to be feared. Um, but I guess that's what we get from this scene up here. So they're on the roof. They're going to evacuate using another zip line. And then the lady with the crazy hair who we had in a scene earlier basically set up to be friendly with Negan. Uh, the, th this is a crucial part to establish what comes next. He kills her and then Negan goes a little insane. <laughs> so Negan's goal in this part, I think, is to show the rest of the group here that Maggie and him are on their side. So we, he takes an extreme measure to do that. So uh, Negan's, I think, a little bit upset that this lady got killed unnecessarily, right? So... He takes the guy responsible and then takes him back into this uh, this big room here where they were situated and he starts smashing him through the windows and this is when Negan is reborn as the original Negan that was introduced way back when and it's the most compelling scene in the entire show so far. It's brutal, it's nasty, it's Negan at his worst and his best, <laughs> and just the, the uh, jovial attitude that he has uh, uh, towards it, you know, where he's cracking jokes, you know, uh, making clever quips about, you know, it's gonna, I hope you've seen the forecast, it's gonna be raining, knock, knock, you know, and, and of course the knock, knock yearns back to uh, you know, the, him knocking at the doors of Alexandria and whatnot. Um, so it's just an amazing scene. I had chills watching this. He brutally murders the guy, rains their blood down, and then cuts out his stomach, and then all this guts flop out. It's really nasty, really gross. I loved every second of it. And he, he's, he, he even roasts the Barazi guy. He roasts his haircut, and <laughs> I loved it, man. I love this scene, dude. Amazing. 10 out of 10 scene. I, I think that this makes the whole episode. If you take this scene out of this episode, it's just okay. This is what elevates it. So if you're a Negan fan, this is what we came to see. I really love this. And then uh, Maggie's like, she she's shocked. So she's like kind of afraid of him seeing the old Negan that killed her husband. So just bringing that back up again. And uh, here we got the B plot with Ginny. She is now deciding to escape and then she distracts a guard and then takes the motorcycle. So uh, I, I like the way that they directed the scene. Um, you know, you, you hear the, the sounds in the distance and then you see the girl and she drops all these rocks. So you know that it was her that did it. Uh, I didn't even need the bit with uh, her dropping the rocks. I felt like it was just for if the audience didn't catch on yet. <laughs> That that's how she got away seemed unnecessary, but I like the scene. I guess she's gonna go to New York City But I don't know how it's gonna make any sense at all It's just it, it kind of feels dumb if she if she manages to find Maggie and Negan It makes no sense at all like she just happened to find another boat around and all that Whatever. I don't know. We'll get back to that. We'll see where that goes I'm not I'm not feeling too great about that particular B plot so here, Negan, he's got an injury on his hand, and now it's nighttime again. Another arbitrary kind of time jump thing. So, you know, again, that's just that's just what we're doing now, I guess. <laughs> and this is where we learn, you know, they're all family. The, the people 
tried to tell Negan and Maggie they lied as well. So Maggie lied and also the people lied. They lied and said, oh, there's thousands of us in the city. Turns out it's just who's on screen and uh, that the Croats people are really uh, just just brutal against them. They're taking their stuff, you know, doing the classic savior thing, I think, except with an even more violent edge to it. So, um, yeah, I, I like this scene here too. And just uh, Maggie decides to reveal the truth. Again, it's another scene where she, control is taken away from her. She's taking a back seat in this episode, like I said. I think that is really smart. So uh, they, these people say they can help get to the Croats people at uh, the, the burning building. So they uh, also say that it's going to be really hard to do. And I guess that the, what Negan did, basically, they're, they're now willing to help out. So uh, they were thankful. So I think that's all a good setup for next week. It could be a really great episode next week. And now we're here at the trap with uh, the bounty hunter guy. And now the Croat himself is here. It kind of feels like, you know, if you're just going to go check a trap where you think there might be somebody there. I don't know that the guy in charge would be the one to go. But, of course, it has to be him, uh, just for the sake of drama, I guess. But uh, now the bounty hunters cut free, uh, they kill all the zombies, and then the Croat, I guess, basically kidnaps um, the bounty hunter guy. So, that's where we're at. So, the bounty hunter is now with the Croat, presumably his prisoner as well. So, uh, I don't know if he's going to become go from being an antagonist last week to kind of uh, being a protagonist, and now we're going to work together to defeat the Croat. Maybe we realize Negan's not as bad as this guy, and that we're going to work together to... I don't know. I'm just guessing, speculating at this point. Overall, I like the episode. The B-plots, I thought, were just okay. Not really necessary. But the A-plot, the stuff with Negan, absolutely awesome. Really love it. Visually stunning, as always. And a little light on the zombie action this week. That's the only thing that kind of uh, uh, puts a little caveat on my positive review. <laughs> but uh, I, overall, I like the episode. I think it was pretty solid. We're consistently like 7 out of 10. Maybe an 8 out of 10 just because I really love that Negan scene. But um, there's a lot of nitpicks this week, so that's why we broke it down. But I hope everybody enjoyed this review. And if you did, please leave your comments in the comment section down below. And hit me with the sub if you don't mind. I would really love it. It helps other people find my videos. But with that, it's been your boy Shogi. I will see you guys next week for the next review. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out.